that megastar, that top entertainment personality. Would you please welcome Dame Edna Everidge. <laughs> Edna, good morning. Good morning to you and good morning to all my lovely little swap shop viewers, wherever you are. Should I have bowed? No, darling. This is an informal moment. It's Saturday morning. No ceremony, so nothing, la -di da Could I ask you to come over to this side of the studio? Thank you, Noel. If you could... Um, Guide me over. Oh, yes. look at this beautiful set they've yes, made for me. We've gone to a lot of trouble, but you, it's no well worth it. No expense has been spared. Isn't it gorgeous, viewers? Just, just before we uh, have the opportunity... Oh, well, yes, please do sit down. Do, do, it must be the down. most lavish set you've ever had on Swap Shop. Well, we've gone to a lot of trouble. How are you? I'm very well. And how was your Christmas? Uh, well, it was all right. Do you get two lots of presents, Noel? Yes, well, I do, actually, because our birthday's on the 22nd. So. Being Noel, you see, did you know that, boys and girls? And mums and dads, too? That a lot of people who are called Noel... I called Noel after Noel, Noel, the lovely old Christmas song, because they were born either on Christmas Day or around about Christmas time. And you know, sometimes, just like lucky Noel here, they get two lots of prezzies, aren't they lucky? Did you have a good Christmas? <laughs> I had a lovely Christmas. I had Christmas in Australia, mm -hmm. and then I had to whiz over here because I'm doing a lovely new show in the West End of London and special matinees too for all my swap shop people on Saturday afternoons. What's, what's Christmas Down Under like? Oh, it's, did you know it's very hot down there? I suppose a lot of people know that, but it, it bears repeating. In our part of the world, it's oh, the warmest toast. We have our Christmas dinner on the beach very often. Can you imagine sitting by the sea, having plum pudding and turkey and all those mince pies? <laughs> It's funny, really, but, you know, we Australians, because that's where I come from, mums and dads and boys and girls, we Australians think it's funny having Christmas in the winter. We think that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Did you get any good prezies? Any, any interesting gifts from, your, oh, from admirers? Oh, yes, I did. I got some new pantyhose. <laughs> I did. Excuse and me. And then I wear it out. You know, I use it for straining the vegetables. <laughs> I do, because... I don't believe in waste, although I'm incredibly rich. I'm about the richest person who's ever been on Swap Shop. <laughs> I don't even need the money, that's why I'm on the show. <laughs> but you know, although I'm incredibly rich, I had very humble beginnings. And, uh, as you have. <laughs> and, uh, and so I don't waste things, I don't. And the old pantyhose I use for all sorts of things. Well, we had a, a marvellous lady on the programme last week, actually, who's, who, Diana Dawes. Who's oh, I love Diana Dawes. Isn't she a wonderful person for her age? She, <laughs> she's not as wealthy as you, but she does have a swimming pool. Oh, and uh, yes. sh she asked a question about money, uh, about farthings. How many farthings were there an old pound? And uh, That's I'd... a difficult one, isn't yes. it? Yes. Would no? you know that? Are you familiar with the, the old sterling currency? Oh, yes, I vaguely remember it. But I don't think I could work that one out. It would take a very clever person to work that one out. I wonder if anyone could. Well, a lot of people did. Eric, could you um, just uh, <laughs> drop in the correct cards? Could you Ooh, wave to Eric? Like... Could you wave to Eric? Because he does... Eric! There you are. He's a great Good fan. Good work, Eric. Isn't he wonderful? He's... He lives up there. Yes, he's a marvellous man. Thank you, Eric! Eric, this is space age, isn't it, Noel? It's marvellous. Once again, no expense spared. And you know, all these clever swap shop viewers have all thought of the right answer, have they? Yes, well, hopefully they have. But I'm going to choose one specially lucky person. Lucky, lucky glove of mine. Find the winner, if you can. It doesn't rhyme, but it nearly did. Would you like me to hold I'll your bag my, for me? Please hold my handbag. It's full of credit cards. <laughs> right. Oh, dear, what a lucky person. And doubly lucky that Dame Edna has picked them. Well, it could be a memorable moment. Uh, there's only one we need. Oh, one. Oh, look. Sad, sad. Right. Ooh, Thank you, Eric. You can take it away Thank now. Thank you, Eric. Look, boys and girls, this has got a beautiful old uh, giraffe done drawn on it. <laughs> See? It's got a giraffe. Someone who's gone to a bit of trouble. You're, and you're on back, the, Damon. And on, thank you. And on the back it says, There are 960 farthings in one pound. 
Diane Lawrence, Woodbine Cottages, Reed, Royston, Hertfordshire. Jolly good, thank you. Lucky Diane, and her name is spelled D-A-I-N-E. Dane. Yes. Really, isn't it? I wonder if she spelled it correctly. I if she got a little letters mixed up there. Yeah. Sometimes people call me Ned, Ned, Nedler. Oh, yeah. They get Edna mixed up too. Shall I hold on to that so we don't lose Please, it? Please, lucky girl, what does she win? Her name's Claire. Claire, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not a D, it's a C. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, if there was a Diane Lawrence living at Woodbine Cottages, Reed, she'd be very disappointed now. Oh, that was a terrible moment for me. It's Claire who wins. I didn't know whether to correct you or not. Well, the I thing is, I haven't got any lenses in my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Could I... Claire Lawrence. <laughs> well done, Claire. She's had her name checks and things. Let's put that there, and Claire. she'll get Diana Dawes swap. Could I ask you to do the top ten board for us? Certainly. Isn't Diana lucky? At... Diana Dawes is lucky at Christmas, isn't she? Isn't she? Her stockings are well filled. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the, the idea, you, as you've already said, you've got an eye to a bargain. If you could read down for us... Yes, uh, I will. ...the ten. Now, these are some little swap shop starlings. Now, at the top, it's Sharon Ryder. Sharon is offering a typewriter. Doesn't say what kind, but I'm sure it's good. And she wants anything to do with Adam and the ants. <laughs> well, that's a tall order, isn't it? <laughs> Jodie Smith is offering a la large soft toys and she wants any books written by E. Noakes. I haven't heard of E. Noakes, have you? <laughs> no, but looks I'm sure like an anagram. Good. He's worth a few soft toys, little Noaksy. <laughs> James Mitchell. Now he's offering two CB walkie talkies. Good heavens. And uh, he wants any electrical games. Well, he's up into technology, isn't he, James Mitchell? And uh, Mabasha Alley. Mabasha. That's a lovely name, isn't it? Not one you hear much. And he's offering sound effects theatre, electronic sound effects theatre, and he wants a computer battleship. <laughs> Perhaps he works for NATO. <laughs> Number five is James Smith. And James, I hope you're watching. You're watching, you're offering a Wilson Pro Size Golf Bag, and you want graphite, golf driver, or anything to do with golf. It's a lovely sport, a lot of nice walking in it. I do a bit of golf. James Kelly is offering Matchbox Power Track 3000. I'm not sure what that is. And he wants any electronic game. People are into electronics now, you know. In a big way. In a very big way. Sarah Horrocks. Little Sarah Horrocks. She's offering a cassette recorder with a holder and six cassettes. Goodness, what does she want? She wants a black riding hat, size six and a half. And she wants jodhpurs. That's a funny word. That's an Indian word, by the way. Did you know that? She wants jodhpurs. <laughs> size 24 waists. Well, remember that. Now, I hope you're all jotting this down, swap shop viewers and mums and dads. Lorraine Gatwood is offering an electronic Merlin game. All these electronic things. And she wants anything. Easily pleased. If anyone's got anything, I can give it to her and I'll, I'll get an electronic game. Um... Kai Yao Chung, now little Kai Yao, is offering a Sony Walkman number no. two portable stereo. May have been bought it as duty free in Singapore, and he wants wants a skateboard, an action man with accessories, and an action man. He wants a skateboard and an action man. Well, that's fair enough because he's offering something, but he, you know, quite impressive in a spooky kind of way. Stephen Smith. Now, little Stephen, what's he offering? A sub, sabetio. Sabutio. Sabutio. But what I think is that, that? I think that's spelled wrong. It's a football game. Oh, a sabutio. I don't know what the next one is. And he's offering a Ya TV dice game. I think that's another <laughs> little duty-free item. And he wants a test match cricket game. Have you seen that, mums and dads? Well, there we are. That's all our ten offers. That's terrific. And uh, let's see what matures of that. Well, this is the way that you go about uh, putting yourself in line for the maturing. If you'd like to have a quick gander at that card, pick a camera, any camera, over there. Yes. And you put on that side what you're offering, the swap number you're interested in. You can peruse the board in a moment. A name, address and telephone number there. And then over that side, that's the address for all correspondence to Swap Shop, BBC TV, London, W12, 8QT. We'll have a competition for you in a moment.
May I ask you to stay around a little oh, longer and help I? us on the phones? I love the atmosphere of this studio. And it's live. It's not recorded. It's going straight out. That's why I'm trusted, because other people might say horrible words and spoil the show, but I wouldn't. I never say anything uncalled for, would I, mums and dads? <laughs> well, if you'd like to give Dame Edna a ring, it's 01811 Here's the board. Peruse it at your leisure. Let's have a cup of tea. Place of the bar. There's me. I'm standing on the bridge of size. It's a misnomer because it's actually quite small, no size at all. <laughs> Many people feel that the buildings in Shakespeare's day were all old-fashioned and half-timbered, Joan, as you see over there. Now, that's me again on the bridge of size at Stratford, talking to a Shakespearean kiddie. <laughs> I've got a wonderful... He's too young to remember Shakespeare, of course. <laughs> I have a wonderful way with children. Look at the little knight. He's not... Oh. <laughs> Must have been something he ate. <laughs> That's a scene from one of Shakespeare's shows. It may be very historic, Joan, but, you know, I found it a little bit repetitive. <laughs> and Hathaway's Cottage, I love this. Isn't it beautiful, Joan? Look, to snow. Snow in February, too. What a topsy-turvy world you live in, Joan. <laughs> Here is Anne Hathaway's oven where Shakespeare burnt the cakes. Do you remember that story? <laughs> It's primitive by Australian standards, but probably luxurious by yours, Jane. <laughs> That's a Shakespearean ping-pong racket. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? And over here, gleaming on the wall, is a Shakespearean hottie. <laughs> and that's Anne Hathaway's dresser. Of course, Shakespeare would have brought many people home after the shows and given them cheese on toast. And things. <laughs> look, look, I found, I found a willow pattern plate which probably inspired Shakespeare to write Madame Butterfly. It could have. <laughs> look, Jane. Shakespearean Gladys. Oh, oh. <laughs> that is a corner of Stratford on Avon. Notice the half timbered. Look, a half timbered car. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? You thoroughly enjoyed seeing yourself there. I again. did that a little while ago now, and I'd forgotten about it, Noel. And hello, mums and dads. Hello. Swap shop viewers everywhere, and on this snowy old Saturday morning, I wouldn't be surprised if almost everyone in the British Isles was watching Swap Shop. Well, I imagine a lot of your fans are trying to phone. If you'd like to pick up a telephone, please, we've got uh, Lisa on the line. Lisa. Lisa, you're through to Dame Hello. Edna Redbridge. Hello. Hello, Lisa. It's Dame Edna speaking. Yes. I rang to say that I went to Australia um, for three years, and now that I'm back in England, people call me Edna. <laughs> <laughs> what a great honour that is for you, Lisa. It is. Have you got some funny glasses like mine that you can wear? No. Oh, darling, I feel like sending you a pair. Did you enjoy Australia? Yes. Oh, it's a lovely place. Do you think you might go back one day, Lisa? Um, no, I don't know. You never know what Dame Nature has in store for you, darling. Thank you for ringing me. Thank you. Um, you know, I wonder if any other kiddies who've been to Australia are called Dame Edna by their schoolmates. What a compliment they're paying you, Lisa. Thank you for ringing. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Lisa. <laughs> H who else is on the line? The machine's not telling me anything. It's Darren. Hello, Darren. Hello. Hi. You're through to Dame Edna, Darren. Darren. What is a typical day in the life of a megastar? Well, a typical day in the life of this megastar is that I wake up in the morning and, uh, of course, I have hundreds of letters. I have more letters sent to me than a swap shop does. And a lot of people, of course, are asking for tickets for my forthcoming show at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. But, of course, a lot of people are just saying how much they adore me, too, and asking for recipes. And then I get into a, a nice dressing gown, and I get up and I have some lemon juice. Because lemon juice and hot water is very good to keep away the colds. And then I have a little boiled egg and a slice of toast. And then... Oh, I go and visit my Mrs. Thatcher, and she asks me how to run the country. <laughs> and then, oh, not every day, but some days, when things are going right, you know, I've been along. <laughs> oh, and then, oh, I might have to go and do a television or something. And then I have to ring Australia because my husband's in hospital there, and he's not very well. And I've got, isn't it sad, but I've got him on a telephone. And uh, he's got his own personal little telephone in the pillow of his hossy bed. Isn't he a lucky old <laughs> hubby? Isn't he lucky to have a megastar wife? <laughs> and uh, I send food parcels to the hospital. They're always very excited. The hospital in Melbourne, Australia, is named after me. It's called the Dame Edna Clinic. <laughs> it is. 
Isn't that exciting? So if you're ever sick, you never know, you might be sent there. I hope you won't be, though. I hope not, though it's luxurious. Everyone's almost glad they're sick who are there. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll have a gorgeous lunch, a luxury lunch. I have caviar. I throw that away because I don't like it. <laughs> but I have champagne. I don't like that much either. I like fruit drinks and natural things. And then I put some garlic in my socks. Do you know why? Because it's whooping cough time now. Have you heard about whooping cough? Yes. Have you had your injection for it? I don't think so. Oh, it's quite important. Oh. Quite important that all the kiddies watching remind their mums and dads that they should have their whooping cough injection. But there's an old-fashioned Australian remedy. You put a piece of garlic in your socks. <laughs> you do. And, and you keep that there and squash it around on your tootsies all day long. <laughs> and in the end of the day, no one speaks to you. <laughs> so you can't catch whooping cough. No, that's seriously an old recipe because garlic is a funny old herb that grows, isn't it? Do you do much cooking yourself? Oh, yes, I do. I like to cook. A lot of megastars don't. They have chefs and things, but I'm still very natural. You know, I, I do my own washing up and everything. And I've even had, although I live in a luxury suite in a hotel in London, the most beautiful, beautiful, like Buckingham Palace. Do you know, I arrange for a hoover and I do my own cleaning. Marvellous. I'll hoover away and defrost I'm going to have to rush fridge. you a little yes. bit, though. Anyway, the rest of the day is spent lots of on opening life. things, flower shows and all that kinds of thing. Yeah. And in the end, of course, I do my show if I'm doing a show. And then I go to bed and I wake up and do all the same things all over again. And thank you for asking okay, me, darling. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, bye. bye. We've got Emma Davies here. She's Hello, Emma. champing at the bit. Hello. Hello, Dame Edna here. Oh, I thought I'd just ask you a few questions, uh, Pepper. Yes, darling. <laughs> I think Emma's voice is playing at the wrong speed. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a lovely suburb called Mooney Ponds. Mooney Ponds? Oh! Because there are Those lovely ponds. Such there. Memories. I, I can remember the Mooney Ponds as I, I wander along Melbourne. Oh, oh. oh, I can remember it all now. Oh, can you, darling? It's all flooding back. <laughs> well, you're a clever little girl. You sound a bit like an actress to me. <laughs> You sound like an Australian, too. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for ringing, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> and we got Philip. Oh, what a character. <laughs> They're all cases. Philip, hello. Hello. Hello, hello Philip. Philip. You're through oh, to Dame Edna. I'd like to ask Dame Edna, mm -hmm. um, now that she's a megastar extraordinaire, how much has had to change her life? Uh, she's in the eye of the public. Oh, well, I, 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 it is a good question, darling, and I thank you for asking it. This is Dame Edna, of course, answering you personally, because I like to do things in a personal way. It's changed my life a bit, because when I was an ordinary housewife, of course, they wouldn't ask me on Swap Shop. But now that I'm a megastar, they have. That's a little thing that's changed, because there'd be a lot of women there up to their wrists in the kitchen sink listening or watching us at the moment who wish they could be on Swap Shop and they haven't got a chance in the world. <laughs> I mean that in a nice way. I mean that in a caring way. I do. Another way it's changed me is that I get given things. People send me makeup, beautiful clothes. You know, I think the richer you get, the less you have to pay. That's not just, really. It doesn't seem right. And yet, in a funny kind of way, I enjoy every minute of it. I get a lot of fun out of life. And can I tell you what the thing that is that gives me the greatest pleasure? Helping other people and sharing with other people. You know, I give away. Most of the things I get, I give. And that yeah, gives well, me I a like lovely to, feeling. What? Yeah, well, I like to say that it's nice to see a bit of cars come into the swap shop. Oh, and how beautifully expressed that is. And how uh, nice it is to see how the other half live. So us poor peasants. Thank you, darling. Don't think of yourself as a peasant. I love England and everything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much indeed. Right, bye -bye. And uh, congratulations on your modesty. Tabitha. Oh. Hello. Hello, Hello Tabitha. Tabitha. I love that name. Um, how big is your wardrobe and how many pairs of glasses have you got? I've got squillions of pairs of glasses. Do you know how many is a squillion? <laughs> it's, an Aust it's Australian word meaning a lot. I've got another pair here as a matter of fact. My wardrobe's huge. It's bigger than this whole swap shop studio. Do you know I've got a frock for every day of the year? I have. Isn't that spooky? And look at these <laughs> glasses I'm going to put on. Oh, I can't see hand. without them. Untangle them, Noel. Uh, Are you watching, Tabitha, as you're speaking to me? Yeah. No, I'm downstairs. Oh, what a pity. Haven't, pity you haven't got a long extension, darling. Well, mm. all your friends are watching, and they can tell you I'm putting on a very funny pair now. Look. 
Look at these. Oh, they're... they're in the shape of a map of Australia, Tabitha. <laughs> they are. Oh, darling, what a pity you can't see them. And they've got little dingle dangles underneath them. That's Tasmania. <laughs> That's a spooky little island underneath Australia. It's like the Isle of Wight. And we call it Tasmania. And it dangles down underneath Australia. It hasn't got a chain attached to it, though. It's got a bit of sea between it. And I've got all these different glasses. And do you know, I think glasses are like the windows of the eyes, aren't they? Your eyes are the windows, and the glasses are the sort of Venetian blinds. In a funny way, aren't I a silly old thing? But in a way, I'm a clever old woman, aren't I? And young people adore me, don't they, Tabitha? Yeah. Oh, don't they? <laughs> Won't you be, don't your friends at school be jealous that you've had a long chat with them, Edna? And you made her take her lovely Australian glasses out of her handbag. Thanks <laughs> Not very many much. people get into my handbag, I can tell you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tabitha. Thanks. Bye, bye bye. Thanks, Possum. Is it Leslie? Yes. Hello, Noel. Hello, Leslie. I'd like to ask Dame Edna, um, do you think you're in any way similar to Queen Victoria? And if you could have met her, what would you have said? If I'd what? If, if, you, you... if you think you're similar to Queen Victoria. Yes, I got that. And what, what you would have said if you could have met her? Oh, if I could have met her. Well, Queen Victoria, not many people know this, she came from Germany. She went to Germany when she was a kitty. So she had a German way of talking. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So she must have talked a bit like that most of the time. Isn't that a funny sort? <laughs> you know, she's supposed to have said, we are not amused. Yeah. She probably said, we are not amused. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> or we have ways of making you laugh. <laughs> So I don't know quite what I would have said to her. I would have uh, said Achtung or something, or Guten Tag. That's German for hello. But I, I suppose we would have got on very well because she had a sick hubby too. His name was Lord Albert, wasn't it? Prince yes. Albert. Yes, Prince and he Albert. was a bit sick too, poor old thing. As a matter of fact, he passed away. Mm. But, but that was probably because the Royal Dame Edna Clinic wasn't in existence. <laughs> he would have gone, he'd probably still be with us today, wouldn't he? A lovely thought. But we would have got on well because we would have swapped recipes, wouldn't we? Yeah. And she was round when Australia was discovered. And so she would have been thrilled to learn about what's happened down under since then. What a wonderful place Australia has become. And, uh, oh, I don't know, I suppose when I go to heaven I'll meet her. <laughs> Leslie, thank you very much thank for the you. question. Thank you, Thanks Leslie. Thanks a lot. And a clever question, Leslie. It was a very nice question. A very nice question and an intelligent question. Thank you might you. grow up to be a quite intelligent person. Thank <laughs> you. On the other hand, you mightn't. <laughs> we'll uh, have a word with oh. Margaret in just a little while, but we do have some refreshments for you. Isn't this wonderful? It's like getting a cross line talking to these people. Yes, you, and can, do put, you, know, you can put it down. I've spoken to a lot of people. Can I put it down yes. there? But you get up very intelligent people listening to this show. Refreshment. Oh, look. Can I help you to a cake? Thank you. Da Hello, gorgeous. Hello. How are you? Everyone? Give me a kiss. Mm. Happy New Year, my Maggie. Do you know, I wanted to ask you, have you had a chance to have a look around the sales, the January sales? Oh, look, I'm frightened of getting trampled to bits on those sales. <laughs> I am. Have you met Keith? Darling, Hello, Keith, <laughs> Keith and I, well, I love it. I love watching him on Swap Shop and you to some extent. <laughs> I don't really know how to behave. <laughs> you behave naturally. You don't have to curtsy. <laughs> to me. Look at these Australian cakes. Would, would you like some tea? These are made according to recipes of mine. Can the camera see them? You like a this is the pr this is the anteater cake. <laughs> <laughs> These are little prickly marsupials. Do you know what a marsupial is? There it's an Australian are. animal. Would you like uh, some tea? Oh, <laughs> some tea. I'd love a cup of tea. Milk. Shall I take that? Uh, a little milk, thank you. Now Sugar? this is a. Oh, oh, look at this. Fix it up. I want to show them this cake now. Look at this cake. Put the little hands. Isn't this funny? Can the camera see it? Especially it's an Australian snake cake. <laughs> <laughs> there are some snakes that live in cakes in Australia. And this is a snake cake. Isn't it spooky? Wouldn't it be creepy? <laughs> be eating a cake one day and a snake jumps out at you. Wouldn't that be creepy? <laughs> Do you take sugar? Uh, these mums and dads are saying this, Dan. They're talking down to the viewers. I'm not. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. This is how I dress grown up, incidentally, as you'll see. Sure. Can you come to my wonderful show at the theatre? <laughs> Don't forget the matinees on Saturday. <laughs> One darling. Do you take sugar? Sugar? No, I'm sweet enough. Oh, oh I am. I I'm going to eat all this glucose. They were, I fixed your cake. Incidentally, for colds, boys and girls, oh, pineapple's yes. good. 
There you go. Pineapple, garlic in your uh, shoes. You've all had a best. And uh, pineapple. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's nice. Look at this, Maggie. Did you drop milk now? Look at these little hands um, grasping. Oh, what happened to the china? Sugar. Well, it's a normal cup. I mean, we don't have to Well, I thought it was a special occasion. Oh, it is oh. a special occasion. Don't, don't you get it? a nice cup? No, I'm afraid I don't. You've I've got, got a, a horrible, bit... yucky old BBC one. And half a roll. Well, we've all had a bit, so don't worry. Who's it's your been turn. eating that? So if you take your bite, then we can give it back. It's not fair, Noel. Thank you. It's, my it's not bite fair, now. is it, viewers? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That Noel doesn't get a nice. Did you see the royal wedding on the telly? Oh yes, I did. I was invited, Maggie, to the royal wedding, but I was busy in Australia and couldn't go. And you know, when I watched the royal wedding on the BBC telly. It was funny because the camera moved up to the front where the royal family was sitting and there was a little empty seat very close to the Queen. I, I suddenly noticed a spot near the Queen, a place where a megastar ought to have been. <laughs> Lovely it was my bit of the pew. <laughs> and you know, most of the other people who couldn't come, they sold the tickets, but they kept mine, a little vacant bit. But I saw it on the telly. It was sad I couldn't have been there because I've since had a Christmas card from Charles and Diana saying how sorry they were I wasn't there. Did you watch it on the television? Oh, yes. I watched it in Australia. Great occasion. Oh, it was... Wasn't it wonderful? And what a wonderful year 1981 was, wasn't it? Mm. It was for me. Was it for you? Oh, it was a marvellous year. Marvellous. And was it for you, Maggie? Oh, fantastic, but, yes. But all I'm going to say is this. I'm a bit psychic. That means I'm spooky. <laughs> and all those hamstered mums and dads won't like me saying that. They don't believe in psychic things. But I'm going to say this. 1982 is going to be better for you both. I got that from the vibration. Did you see me touching Noel? I got a vibe from him. And I got a vibe from Maggie there. What about Keith? Is he, is he, is he going to have a good year? My no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You'll have quite a good year. What sort of year will I have? Quite a good year. Quite a you good have year. financial problems. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, his car broke all. down last week. That's true, my car broke down. You'll have so. a little trouble with your car. Did I say that? We've got... <laughs> no, I said that. Yes. Isn't that spooky? <laughs> Isn't that spooky? He read my mind. <laughs> Good health and a happy 82 to you all. What sort of year have you got planned ahead? We'll take some more calls in a little while. Oh, I've got an exciting year. Of course, it starts with Swap Shop. And you've and, got a show on And there, then I you? go to this Drury Lane Theatre. It's in London and it's got ghosts in it. Did you know that? There are ghosts. It's got about five ghosts. Of I what? hope they pop up when you're there, boys and girls and mums and dads. <laughs> Little ghosts. The trouble with ghosts in the theatre is they don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap seats. And then you, will you be returning to Australia later oh, in the year? Yes, but I've got a lot to give England. You know, there's been a little bit of trouble here, hasn't there, and worry. And uh, I want to bring a lot of happiness and a lot of laughter. You see, when I was born, a little baby, a few years ago now, and when I was young, I looked just like Olivia Newton-John, by the way, <laughs> which gives you a rough idea what she's going to look like when she's tired. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was given a gift. Dame Nature, like the three wise men, you know, came along and said, gave me a little gift. They planted it in me. And you know what that gift was? The gift to entertain and bring happiness to people. And what a selfish, selfish person I'd be if I didn't give that gift away. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't I be selfish? Yes, yes I think you, you would. would. You would indeed. Yeah. But I'm not selfish. And I'm going to be giving it away hand over fist Johnny. at this spooky old theatre along with its ghosts, Mackie. Ooh. Well, oh, come to, popping I'll, up. I'll have to stop you there because we've got news. Stop me. We, yes. Uh, well, we've got news coming up now. Uh, news. But we're going to take a few more calls Exciting. in just a moment. I hope it's but, good news. Well, I'll find out. 12 o'clock, John Craven with the news. John. No tragedy, please. Yes, it was very good news, and I'm glad old Doddy found his little dicky. Because it, I'd hate to end up on a rubbish dump, Noel. Wouldn't it be ghastly? Would you like to pick up the phone again, Dame Edna? Uh, Margaret has been hanging on the line for some time while we took uh, light refreshment. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Hello. Hello, darling. Dame Edna speaking. Um, I'd like to ask you, where do you get all your clothes from, especially the glasses? Well, my clothes are often made for me by my son, Kenny. He's a very clever designer. He always wanted to be a dress designer. You know, even when he was a baby, he had little pins in his mouth. I mean, that's, no, I mean they were blunt ones. Babies watching, don't put pins in your mouth. But uh, 
he used to like measuring his dollies and making little frocks for them. He was so clever with those things. And uh, he makes my dresses now, bless his heart. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be very famous, like the Emmanuels who made the royal wedding frocks. I think he's Australia's answer to the Emmanuels. And my glasses, I get from in Paris, I get them in Rome, but a lot of them are old, they're heirlooms, they come from the 50s. Have you heard of a thing called the 50s? No. It was a place that once existed. <laughs> it was a funny kind of a little, like an island. And people on it, Elvis Presley lived there for a while. He did, and Buddy Holly. He did, and uh, oh, a lot of people lived there for a bit, part of their lives. And people dressed in funny clothes too there. And uh, they, there was a little factory on 50s Island, and they made glasses. And sometimes they get washed up on the beaches in Australia, and I wear them. They're pretty good, aren't they? There you go, there's the answer to your question. Thanks okay. very much for Thank calling you. us. Bye. I had a mystified little voice on the end of the phone there. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> stunned. Have you brought a swap for us, Dame Edna? A swap? Yes, I have. I've bought a swap now. All oh, these cakes. Congratulations, by the way, to the person who made these cakes. Give them a big very, hand. Very, very good. A big <laughs> hand. <laughs> oh, well said. You know, I think one of the reasons you're still on the show, Noel, is that you're quick. <laughs> you're very quick-witted. Have now, you brought a swap? I've brought it? Australian swaps. And you know what they are? It's a beautiful kangaroo. Now this is one of our animals. Can you see it, boys and girls in the studio audience? Yes. Say yes, loudly. Yes. yes, Dame Edna. Yes. Listen to them, the darlings. This has got a joey in its pouch. Baby oh. kangaroos are called joeys. Oh. See it popping out there? The mummies, the mums keep the joeys in the pouches. And when they're very little, they're tucked right down in there, zipped up down there and they have their little milk supply down there too and that the mother hops along of course this is just a, a model of one it's not a real one and uh, that's why i can do that to it <laughs> and this is a koala bear now koala bears isn't that beautiful can you imagine how soft it is on my soft old chops <laughs> and this is a koala bear these here live in the trees of australia every tree's got a couple and here's its little joey. It's not called a joey, it's called a little baby koala. And it sits up in between its ears. And See it? have you got a question for us so that we can award these next week? Yes. Now I'm going to ask you a question. And because these are very precious to me, I'm going to ask you a difficult one. Mums and dads might have to help, but don't tell us you're cheating. What is the name of a great big rock, a big rock in the middle of my homeland, Australia? Right. Now, it's near a place called Alice Springs. So the name of the rock. Alice is rock. the name of an old kangaroo that used to spring a lot. <laughs> so that answers now on the postcard. the name of a big... I'll tell you one more clue. This rock is red. <laughs> big red rock a in Australia. A big red rock in Australia. Oh. Answers for next week. On a postcard, the Swatch Shop, BBC TV London, W12 8 Thanks, Tech. Noel. I'm sorry to have to rush you, Damon. Don't no. I'm sorry to rush you, my beloved. The, the, the rolls is waiting outside. We'll whisk you to your next engagement. I love engagement. your shirt. What a good tablecloth that would make. <laughs> Here's Foreigner, and a very nice tune. Dame Edna, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having me. God bless you. Happy New Year, darlings, everywhere. Bye-bye.